Hi, Patrick. Hello, Patrick. Hey, Dale and Ken, how are you? Good. <laughs> Good. Can you? Good to meet Did you. Not, I thought I'd, we had lost you there for a minute, but you yep. still there? No, no, I'm still Just here. Just a temporary right. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Good to All see right. you, Patrick. Well, Pat, like I said, Patrick is a new COS volunteer, and there's a couple reasons uh, that uh, I, I wanted to feature him tonight. Uh, a couple reasons specific to why he chose to get into this uh, convention of states. But very quickly, Patrick, um, give us a, a little bit on, on your background. Where, sure, where you sure. Well, I am from beautiful Gary, Indiana. I grew up right. right by the steel mills back when Gary was the murder capital of the United States. So I grew <laughs> up in the hood. Oh my. Uh, I ended up uh, going to a Catholic high school in uh, Merrillville called Andran, where the most consequential thing in my life happened. I met this beautiful young woman named Ellen White. Uh -huh. who I've been married to for the last 45 years. Oh, good for you, good for so, you. So she is the greatest woman on planet Earth. <laughs> and I actually say this when she's not in the room. <laughs> and she is the mother of our five children. Five so, kids, wow. So I, uh, I went to college originally at Valpo on a full uh, scholarship, but transferred to Indiana University where I graduated with an accounting degree with distinction. I ended up uh, passing the CPA exam concurrent with graduation and uh, ended up starting off with uh, the largest CPA firm on planet Earth where I made partner at age 33. And then uh, after they sold off my business, uh, I was the national director of tax for what is now the seventh largest accounting firm in the world. So I could have a few beers tonight and I will forget more about what is in the tax code than <laughs> what that we all 535 members of Congress know. <laughs> so, all right. So that's, uh, that's the short snippet of my life. Okay. Excellent. Good, good deal. Well, how, how tell us then how you uh, came across Convention of States. Sure. Well, you know, I, I had this really bad idea last fall that I was going to run for Congress. Yeah. And there were a few things that got me into that position, a few drivers, which I won't necessarily get into. But I probably spent a month prior to deciding finally to get into the race in terms of what my planks would be. What would be the tipping points what would be the leverage points that could make meaningful change in the country? And the number one issue, the platform that I'm running on, is term limiting the Congress. Because we are all smart enough to know that nothing changes if nothing changes. And this is a position that over 80% of all people in the country believe in. 89% of Republicans, 76% of Democrats and like 83% of independents want to see it happen. So it should be an easy thing to have happen, right? This is, well, this is, uh, this is the re this is the, one of the reasons why I wanted to bring Patrick on. Right. Uh, Amy, Cause term limits is one of the pillars of right. the C COS resolution, uh, term limits on, uh, uh, Congressional leaders, uh, especially congressional leaders, Supreme Court justices, and other federal right. officials that right. that in uh, the administrative state. Uh, um, how, however, right. you know that takes in a lot of people, and and I was right. impressed that, that that was an interest of yours. So, well, that, that again, I spent a lot of time thinking about how I could affect change in a congressional position. And again, I didn't get the nomenclature right initially, but I got the action right spot on. I did. So, you know, I ended up looking at originally who was actually out there advocating for term limits. And really the, 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 only, other, the only organization I could find 
was U.S. term limits. Yeah. And from what I could discern, they are incredibly weak. You know, they they have this thing called the term limits pledge, and that's the main thing that they advocate. But that's like making the Boy Scout pledge or the Cub Scout <laughs> pledge. I'm ser I'm serious. Yeah. When yeah. I'm at debates, you know, we have several people that talk about. Oh well, I made the U.S. term limits term limits pledge. That's BS. It means nothing. You know, your organization has at least taken a handful of steps to actually make a convention of states happen. So, to me, that's a key issue. And by the way, you said, well, you got twenty nine thousand people watching. If you have me on a few more times, you'll have like five million viewers. You think so? <laughs> be, be, because of my passion and knowledge about how to affect particular change. Tell us briefly. We we uh, briefly tell us your your research and 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 your thought process about term limits. Sure. What kind, what kind of term limits are you talking about with regard to? Yeah. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Well, I looked what you guys came up with in your convention or whatever the heck it was. 24 years, really? <laughs> that's, that's that's like forever. Yeah. So, yeah. so so for me in the world according to Patrick, it needs to be an 8-year maximum term. So four terms in the house or one term in the Senate, one term in the house with no ability to lobby for a 10-year period of time. You know, it's kind of like grade school, right? You know, you get to eighth, you started first grade, you ended eighth grade. It's time to move on to high school. And that's that's how I believe it needs to be with Congress. I, a few of the candidates that I'm running against talk about, well, you know, you need to have a certain amount of time to understand the legislative process. If you can't figure that out in two weeks, you're pretty effing stupid. <laughs> yeah. you, you you truly are. Yeah. You know you, you don't belong in Congress if you can't discern how the the voting process and how the legislative process works. Yeah. Again, that's 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 how I process things. But again, I've worked with a lot of smart people in my career, and they have to figure things out in a handful of days. Yeah. What about uh, are you are you including uh, Supreme Court justices? I, I am not because what I'm looking at first is what are the pivot points to make change happen. If you look at what's occurring right now in Congress, and again, the way I've structured my my campaign is to focus on the 80 percent of the people. If you look at what's happening right now, you have the outer extremes of both parties getting 80% of the attention. These are the people that you see on MSNBC, CNN, Fox, and all the standard media channels. Right. You know, I want to focus on the 80% of people that that agree on certain issues that want particular change. So again, we talked about earlier here tonight how over 80% of people in the country want congressional term limits, but it can't happen. Help me understand how that is. Or 80% of the people want to have a closed border, you know, are not in favor of illegal immigration, but 80% of the same people are in favor of legal immigration. Why can't we get that passed through Congress? Well, part of the reason, let me help you understand why that is. We can't get it passed because we have factions on each side of the party that interfere in getting that accomplished. So again, okay. to me, when I looked at my planks, what would be the most important issue to affecting change? It's congressional term limits. Now, it's possible that if we affect the kind of change that I'm talking about, that we could get, you know, 535 bozos, you know, but I'm willing to take that risk under the presumption that it's so screwed up right now that that I, I'm willing to take that that chain that risk of having newer minds, different minds, younger minds to affect change. 
Okay. I agree with that, Patrick. How, how do you how do you see the the problem with the unelected bureaucrat? That well, here uh, you know this question came up a couple times, and it's a great question, Ken. If Congress is effectively doing their job, what do they have? They have the power of the purse, don't they? Yeah. They can they can determine how money is being spent. So again, if these folks are doing their job, they can say, you know, these bazillion people that are, are currently in all of these different cabinet areas in the country, they can be eliminated. I want to share a quick story. You know, I just recently finished Elon Musk's biography. And, you know, when he took over Twitter, there's actually a couple good stories out of that. But when he took over Twitter, within a matter of months, he fired 75% of the people. Why? Because they weren't doing anything. They were just taking up space and getting lattes and whatever. You know, we don't have the uh, we don't have the fortitude to get something like that, that done. However, you know, is there equally that amount of dead wood in all these different administrative positions? No question. Yeah. But it is not going to happen unless you get different minds, better minds, younger minds. You know, my personal concern is that you know we're going to just let life take its journey here and stuff is going to hit the fan here in, I don't know, five years, 10 years. Again, you can't be nearly $35 trillion in debt and, and blowing, you know, an extra trillion dollars a year without there being consequences. Yeah, right. You, you know, one of the things I always talk about, you know, my, my so-called entry speech when I'm doing a debate or a talk is I, you know, I reflect back on the last couple of decades and, you know, a little over 20 years ago when President Clinton left office, our country was actually in a pretty good spot. We were at peace. People seemed to get along and we had generated four consecutive years of budget surpluses. In fact, our head of the Federal Reserve at the time, Alan Greenspan said, we'd be able to pay off all of our national debt by 2006 and then we'd be able to go ahead and pre-fund Social Security to the tune of about $500 billion a year. Well, that didn't happen, did it? Sure didn't. Well, it sure didn't. Well, what, what did happen? Well, you know, W took office in, in 2001 and the first thing that happened was we passed two massive tax cuts that largely benefited our highest income people. And I was one of them and I was pissed. <laughs> the, reason I, the reason I was because I could tell since I ran a national tax practice, what was gonna happen to our budget. And it made about a $650 billion change in one year. Yeah. Then we, we, ended, we ended up going into wars in Afghanistan, Iraq. You know, when President Obama came into office, we added a, a couple of new social pro programs like Obamacare, and then boom, COVID spending yeah. was the icing on the cake. And that's why we're 35. It all, it all started in the Bush. It all started in the Bush administration. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, at the time, I, 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 I was a Democrat at the time. I didn't change parties until 2008, you know. But if you think about it, when Bush took office, he had a Republican House and a Republican Senate, and it was the first time it happened in 45 years, yep. you know, yeah. since the Eisenhower administration. So you talk about Republicans being so fiscally respons responsible, that's nonsense. So again, right. I'm, right. a, I'm a CPA, you know, I, 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 I I'm not just a, you know, just like uh, not all people that play football make it to the NFL. Right. If there was a Hall of Fame for CPAs, I'd be in it. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, the other thing, we got to wrap it up here. Uh, oh, that's too bad. The, the other thing that uh, I, I, I wanted to 
and the other reason I wanted to bring you on tonight was our 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 core value of self governance and encouraging our volunteers to get involved. And while we can't make this a political uh, uh, speech for you, but you are running for Congress. Sure. All right. Yes. And that's 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 a uh, uh, self governance. That's what we that's what we encourage our volunteers to do. Sure. So if you want more information on Patrick, there's his website, patrickmforcongress.com. Right. And uh, if you live in the fifth congressional, it's fifth district, right? That's correct. Uh, you want to uh, uh, check out Patrick. So Patrick. <laughs>